Reaper 5.60 is now available, and with it comes a lot of great features, more improvements to automation items, to general uh, automation workflow. There are new peak modes, again, improvements to spectral editing, and a lot of other cool stuff. Let's get started with automation items. There's a new option to disable the envelope outside of automation items, which effectively makes it an automation item only automation mode. Now you're not going to find this in the, the track automation modes here, but you'll actually find it is in the automation lane or in the options menu. So let's go up to the options menu and automation items. Now there's this option bypass underlying envelope outside of automation items. I'm going to keep that off at first so we can just see um, before and after what it's actually like. Let's take the synth here. And on this, I've got this radiator plugin from Sound Toys. And in this section, I've put in an automation item that is ramping this up. And it's looped, so it's repeating that for uh, four times. But outside of the automation item, it's actually locked to this specific level that's set here on the envelope. Let's play from about here. Etc. It repeats. Now this new automation option we have is in the right click menu, automation item options for this envelope. We can choose to follow the project or we can bypass this envelope. If we bypass it, now that envelope disappears outside of the automation items. I'll reset that. And now it's back there. So when I have a bypass underlying envelope outside of automation items enabled, we can set this control to anywhere we want. So we can have hands-on control of any of the parameters this would be great for live performance because we can tweak things. And then when there's things need to be very specific, it will jump to the uh, written automation inside of the automation items. So that's a really cool improvement. This is something that a few users really, really wanted. And yeah, it's great to have. Something else that's new is being able to look at your automation items inside of the Media Explorer. So let's go to View and Media Explorer. I've got it docked here. I've got a shortcut saved to my automation items folder that's in application support slash Reaper. It's pretty easy to find if you've ever done any uh, customizing of Reaper. Um, if you don't know where it is, go to options and show Reaper resource path in explorer slash finder. And then you add that folder to the sidebar. So I have some automation items saved already. Here's stutter saw one. And we see a preview of what that would look like. Um, once you put it into the, uh, the project. And I have some other ones here, different gates and sequences. So not only can we preview the automation items in the uh, Media Explorer, we can't play it because it's not connected to a parameter, but we can see what the pattern is. We now have some right-click menu options for these automation items. So if we right-click, Insert into project and it's just going to put it on the selected uh, or the la like the last touched envelope lane on the selected track. It can replace a automation item. It can replace and stretch or loop to fit whatever your time selection is. Or we can find the original file in the file system. So I think it might be good to, let's say, take the treble parameter and automate that a little bit. So I've moved it. I'm going to param and show track envelope. Now I'm gonna take this one here and just drag it in like that. And I'll figure out what the best uh, position and timing of this is. So if I zoom in here, you can see that 
it's starting on bar 45. It goes to just past 46. So the tempo of this automation item is a little bit different than the actual project. I'm just going to hold down Alt or Option and shrink that down. I have Loop on already, so I can just drag this out. But this might, this looks like it's moving a little too fast to work well for this pattern. So let's actually stretch it out to not one bar, but two. So it's two bars long and I will loop it. We can also replace that. So if I have this one selected, I can go to this other um, this other sequence. I can right click, replace selected automation item. Might need to adjust the uh, the stretching of that. Yeah, it looks like it. We'll just bring that into this long and stretch that out to two and then loop that. And this is a uh, on off sort of sequence, a gate type sequence. Okay, this is probably not a great example of this, but I think you get the idea. You put in an automation item, you can see the treble parameter moving here. Um, we were able to replace it using the context menu and things like that. This is all new stuff. There is now a double click mouse modifier to load in automation items. So let's actually put in a, an empty one here. Like that. I'm going to Alt, double click, and that brings up this smaller menu for loading the uh, automation items. Now let's look in mouse modifiers to see how you set that up. So you go to preferences and mouse modifiers, automation item, double click. It's not enabled by default, but you can choose from this list and load automation item. That's working pretty well for me, totally personal preference. Here's something in the theme development tweak window. There's now an option to set the color of an unselected automation item. You can see this kind of a gray color. If I click here, you can choose this uh, cyan. And now the unselected ones are that color. And when I select, it goes to the, um, it follows these colors. So here's something that was broken a little while ago. If you uh, go to a receiving track, let's say the reverb return, and you want to automate all of the send levels of the tracks going into this. Uh, it used to be that if you open up the receives envelope section, uh, maybe you didn't even know about this, um, but it wouldn't work. So uh, since one VST is, has a send volume, if I click this, it's not going to show up on this track, but if we scroll up, this track's send volume is now visible. These are the envelopes for Verb short, if I click this, it shows and hides the send level going into that track on the original sending track. Uh, so that was broken, it just didn't do anything for a, a couple versions. Here's something that's really simple. Um, if you look at automation on mute envelopes, it's going to always be on or off. It's always going to give you that square shape and there's no in-between values anymore. Not really a big change because it would always kind of function like that, but you could actually have um, envelopes in between. You can only do square on these envelopes now. You can still find in between values if you put in an automation item and load in a sequence that has in between values, but it's still going to be on or off. But if we touch any of these, it's going to snap up to either on or off. Hope that makes sense. It pretty much worked like that already. Uh, it's just kind of a visual change. Here's a new option. Go to Options and Peaks Display Mode, 
We now have two options here. First is rectify peaks. That basically combines the top and bottom voltages of that uh, audio file and displays them all at once on one going from zero at the bottom of the item up to clipping at the top. This is something you'll see a lot in video editing programs. It can be a good way to maximize the amount of information that's uh, displayed at once. And again, this is totally optional. There's also this option, scale peaks by square root, which means that all your waveforms will uh, appear to be larger. This is a good thing if you have kind of uh, low recording volumes and you need to, things to be um, kind of inflated a bit so you can see more detail. That's a good option for that. And that mode works with both regular peaks mode and rectified peaks. Scale peaks by square root, puffs them up, and rectify peaks, makes them look like that. These are pretty cool options. I've been doing some editing over the past week with that, and uh, it's actually really, really helped. So those are great features to have as an audio editor. Opening up project settings, there are new options for pitch shifting. If we go to the default pitch shift mode, we now have a new rubber band library option here. But before I get to that, we'll look at the pitch shift parameter menu. It's now been condensed. Instead of having a long list of, I don't know, 15 different items with all the different options here, you can choose one of these and then choose mid-side or synchronized. You have all the same options as before, but now it's just a, uh, a simplified list, a little quicker uh, to go through at a glance. So if we go to rubber band library, there are a lot of different options here. This is a new audio stretching uh, algorithm library. There are a lot of different options here. I don't have time to go through them today, but uh, maybe I'll do another video on that in the future. If you go to Reaper Preferences and Audio, then there's a new page for Mute and Solo, and your Mute and Solo options are now here. So your Auto Mute, the Solo and Front Dimming, um, whether you're using Normal or Solo in Place Solos, it's all here. Okay, so now let's look at uh, some spectral editing changes. Right-click the item, go to Spectral Edits, and Show Spectrogram. Let's see what we have. What I'll try to remove here is this uh, really annoying squeak in here. I'm not sure if I can get rid of those footsteps, but I'll try to uh, get rid of that squeak at least. So I'm going to right click, go to Spectral Edits, add Spectral Edit to Item, and I'll shrink this. So a couple things I want to show you is uh, first, if you unselect if you just click anywhere outside of the um, spectral edit, it will hide the controls. So before it was always visible. If it was the last thing you, uh, if it was the last spectral edit you touched, those controls would always be active. Now they disappear if you are not actively editing them, and that's great. That makes sense. The next thing is uh, notice these four fade knobs on uh, on one for each side of your edit. Let's do a lot of gain reduction here. Really black that out. Make it a little bit bigger. And now if we pull up the bottom fade, top fade, left and right fade, we can make that edit a little more gradual. So I'm not sure if these settings are going to work at all. Let's just take out like, I don't know, minus 17. Nope, missed it. Hey, that's not, that's really not that bad. And bypass that edit. We can hear how it sounded before. And 
And also, if you're not using these fade knobs, you can hold down shift and uh, on any of the edges, and that will change the fade. So you can grab the knob, or you can just hold down shift and move the edge. I'll do another one. I'm just command dragging, and I will change the length. And let's see if that one worked as well. A little bit longer on this side. So that annoying metal squeal has now been removed. Really cool to have the fade options on all corners now. And that's where I'll leave it for today. Thank you so much for watching. So many great features in this update. Top things for me are the, uh, the fade handles on spectral edits, rectified waveform, and that new option to disable the envelopes outside of automation items. That one, I think it's gonna take me a long time to wrap my head around, but uh, I think it's really cool, really powerful. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.